Hello guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to draw text in SelfCAD. The first is the most basic option in the freehand drawing. You take your text uh, from the available fonts that's here or you add your own custom font. You type in the text that you want it to be drawn and then you just stretching it out. So you can take from point here to point here. I can type in the exact measurements, so let's say 400 should be the length and I press enter and then I finalize it. Once I finalize it, this will be based on the height settings. The default would be 20, as you can see, the height is 20. When I finalize it, it creates a mesh and that's basically, it tells you what the standard message we give after freehand drawing, that whatever is a polygon got uh, uh, basically uh, was converted into a mesh. So then here you have the text and that's it, that's the basics. Now let's take the, and in this case, you don't have the insides already filled, everything else. Now let's take the more advanced option where you go to 3D sketch. Uh, the way of drawing is very similar. So I can take here a text and I can draw it. And same idea just in general to make it draw uh, smooth. If you want to draw straight, you can use the precision settings. So the same as a freehand drawing. I mean, you can snap to grid, for example, if you want to snap from vertex points on the grid to other points. Or you can use, in my case, I like to use minimum angle step size. You can adjust the angle, but 15 usually is good. So if I start drawing, not even from a point from the grid, just any point, let's say here, and you can see the minimum that I need to move is 15. And this is easy to keep it straight because, um, you know, it doesn't, um, you have to make big deviations in order to make that an angle. So that should be fine. In this case, I'm going to make two tests now to show something. So I'm going to type in one would be 200, a size of 200, and then I'll do the same thing again. And I'll type in a size of 300, just to show the difference. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you how you can actually, um, actually I did a mistake. I should have done it in a different profile. So I'm going to select these and I'm going to split it off. So now we have two separate profiles, okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do fill polygon, and that's how you convert a mesh into a surface, that's called a surface. And as you can see what happens over here, it fills everything, including the inner holes polygons. So I will show you two ways you can do it. So the first thing I'll show you is you're gonna to go to polygon selection, and you select the selects entire polygons, um, or if you go to face selection, you need to pick manually like all of these faces, which is kind of tedious. So there is an advanced settings in polygon selection, which is called part selection. And as part selection, you can select parts. So you just select these inner parts and basically you delete them. So now you get this selected. I mean, completed the same way you had it before, but still this is just a surface. It's not a mesh yet. So in order to convert it to a mesh, you go to add thickness and you're adding, let's say 20 would be the same height we used before in freehand drawing. And you have the same output where you have a mesh of 20. Okay, so now let's take the other part, this one, and let's show a different example how we're gonna do it over here. So in this case, you can use the same full polygons and I'm gonna first add thickness as it is. So I'm gonna add thickness, same thing, 20, but now I'll go after the fact, after it's filled, I'll go to the polygon selection to advance to this and I can still select them these parts so suppose you want to keep them just maybe give it a different color or kind of extrusion maybe negative extrusion make it minus 10 so it's a hole inside for this and this is where this comes in this flexibility where you have option and you can do let me undo it the selection by the way you can undo as you can see it brings back the previous selection and let's say I color it a different color just just to give an idea so how what could be done with this way of drawing but that's just one part. The reason I made this two sizes because I wanted to show you something else, how you can actually position later these texts, what you can do with it. So we'll go back to the 3D sketch and I'm going to draw an arc, okay, a two point arc. And let's say something like this and something just random, an arc. And now I'm going, I don't know the size of the arc. I don't want to go into measurement of the arc. So I'm going to draw separately I'll deselect this so it creates a new profile or you can do from setting over here profile settings and just click in the option over here to make a new profile. But deselecting for me is usually easier and I'm going to go to a line. I'll draw one line which is going to be 200. Um, that's I guess the same size as what we did the smaller size if I remember correctly. And other one I'll draw another line as a new profile as well. And let's make this 400. So we have different uh, options over here. Okay, so 
let's finalize this and now I want to show you the idea what you can do with follow path so I'll take this path the smaller one and let's see first I'm gonna do follow uh, I'll select something that I want to follow I want this to follow this line I want to position it on this line so I'll take this and then I, I select this one as well and I go follow path and I use the option wrap and as you can see it wraps around I have to rotate the object because this is creates it rotated so you can rotate it but you see it basically wraps around the text and that doesn't have to be a straight line could be any angle or whatever this will work what will happen if I do let's undo this what will happen if I um, what did I do? I'm not sure what I did. Okay. Oh, it was this way. Okay. So what will happen if I wrap the same text onto the bigger uh, line? So if I do this now, um, go to Tools, Follow Path, and I wrap it on the same, uh, you can see if the... First of all, use tangent is something. If I use the tangent to calculate the position, this will be more um, uh, necessary if you follow an arc and things like that. But you can see if I don't have on the the option for repeat, it just stretches and it makes sure it fills the entire line. If I turn on the option for repeat, it writes the word self-cut, then it starts writing again self-cut and actually have space to start writing just half of the S. It it's actually breaks it over here, just part of the text. So this is what repeat will be doing. Um, what if I make it smaller? So let's take now I'll take the bigger one, the bigger self-cut. I'll take this one. And I'll wrap it onto the small one. So just so this is the example where it's actually the line is smaller than this. So if I do the wrap option, you can see it cuts the text in half. And again, I have to rotate uh, self cat. You can see it starts cutting the text in the middle. And if I turn off the repeat, it will shrink it and make it fit as well. So basically, repeat option is not only to repeat if you have more than that. It makes sure it's exact size. Um, if repeat is on, if it's smaller, it will cut it in half. If it's the thing that follows is larger, it will start repeating. While when repeat is on, it will just, uh, I mean, this one repeat is on. If repeat is off, it will just make sure it either stretches it or shrinks it just to make it, um, uh, you know, fit the size. Okay, now let's take a look if I have this arc. It doesn't matter which part we're taking. Let's take this one and I select this one. And then I go to follow path. I've selected something, uh, too many profiles. I have to deselect the profile. Select only one object and one profile. And now let's go to my follow path and let's wrap it. As you can see, this wraps it nicely. This is a way of positioning things. Um, so, okay. so you can basically follow any object. Um, while we are at this point, let me just reduce, kind of remove all of these. And and just to show you a little bit more the follow path so actually this can work on profiles as well so i'm just going to show you an example what if i follow one profile to another profile i actually have two arcs okay so if i take this and follow this let's see what's going to happen um, this this gives me now different options if i have only path only one option i don't have the the other more options that i have in the mesh but look what this is giving me um, this gives me kind of a mesh like this and uh, it's black because the inner, the, the normals, okay? So if I don't use tangent, it's still, but I need to add thickness. Um, this doesn't have thickness. So if you see, if I finalize it, um, once you finalize it, we show, this is a subject from another video that we have rendering, how we show interfaces and so on. But if I turn on my back face calling, you'll see this doesn't have, uh, and again, I'll explain this in a different video. But in order to make this a manifold mesh, I need to add thickness, and let's say in this case make it 20, and this should be now working fine. I'll test it again, my back face calling on, and you can see everything is working as expected. Um, but this is also relevant, as you see before, I had to rotate the object, so let me just show you. So if I would rotate, for example, this profile, um, it will give me a different result, because it depends how it's positioned. So if I take, for example, this and then I want this to follow this and we go to follow path we let's preview look what we got over here so here actually the face is outside and the inside is is this way again I will still need to add thickness to make it manifold but that's basically what you get if you do the opposite way the first thing that you select follows the next thing that you select to follow so if I take this to follow this you will get a different results even if I take the same tools, just a matter of what I select first. 
So now you get this type of shape. And so yeah, so that's basically it. I can choose to fill this or not to fill it. If I fill, it will add these sides. You'll see once I finalize it. So you see the fill basically added these and these and it created this type of shape. But still I need to add thickness um, to make sure it's a manifold shape. Uh, but that's basically what follow path is and this is how you can use it with text to wrap around almost anything um, and there's a lot more follow, uh, follow path and some other things I mentioned over here I'll follow up with other videos uh, thank you and let me know if you want me to teach anything else bye